chapter 15. We made it here all the way to chapter 15. Congratulations. This is going to be a really important chapter for you as we turn the page into our more serious speeches, the ones that take up more of a majority of your grade for the semester. you got the inform- informative speech as well as the persuasive speech coming up, but we're going to tackle the informative speech and what it means to speak to inform to different people. And so we're going to take a look at what the chapter has for today. I'm going to give you a few tips and points that I've kind of collected over the semester that's going to help you guys out. When you start a speech, you do not start off by saying, today I will be speaking about, or hey, my topic today is. These are things that you don't do, especially informative speeches or any speeches, to be honest. But we want to stay away from that. You also need to make sure you're previewing your speech. If you take a look at the rubric, you're supposed to be previewing. If you have three points, tell us what those are before you dive in too deep. If we can't follow your roadmap, we don't know where you're going. So it becomes confusing. Remember that transitions are indeed your friend. Please use transitions. Let us know when you're shifting from one thought to another. You have to give us a really good conclusion. Remember that that whole conclusion of the speech is a whole nother part of your rubric that many people lose points on. Valid conclusions are going to help your audience remember. Remember the lawyers, they win cases by their opening and their closing. Some of us are forgetting how to close a speech. Go back and listen to the lecture on how to close a speech or to look in your book and find it. You clinch that speech. Give us something memorable to walk away with. Feel free to use PowerPoint transitions. These next two speeches are going to be filled with PowerPoint slides, and you're going to have to use those. Uh, use use your transitions on the slides. I don't mind. Uh, use keyword PowerPoints that are, instead of notes um, and that are in your hands. You can use PowerPoints as well. Uh, reading from your slides or your notes just makes us think that you're scared of us or that you're mad at us. You know, don't do that. This is not public reading. This is public speaking. So make sure that you're speaking to us. You don't bring all your notes up there and you don't put a ton of words on your slides that make you read it. In fact, if you stare at your slides, it's not going to make us go away. So be careful about that. Eye contact is where it's at. Oh, and by the way, when you make your PowerPoints, a dark blue font over a black slide or a text or over pictures is really, really hard to read. So be careful. Uh, My rule of thumb is a light pale background with a dark text on top. That's where you want to fall. Don't put a ton of stuff on your screen, though, on a PowerPoint. If you put a thousand words, we can't read it. And guess what? We're going to try. And so we're going to be looking at the screen and not you. We're not going to be paying you the attention you deserve. So don't put that. We have to be careful when we make these, these slides that we're not confusing people by them. Here's a few more tips, okay? Don't forget, follow the recipe. That's why we have this whole chapter that we devoted to outlining. Follow the recipe. Use that outline format of general purpose, specific purpose, and your central idea. Uh, Type out your transitions. Those are fine to have on your note cards. There's nothing wrong with putting your transition on your speaker's notes. And make sure you talk to us, okay? Use that keyword outline. Don't bring... Your your you know your entire outline up there. You're looking for keywords. Make your PowerPoint your keyword uh, outline that you can follow along. Simply touch on the point, turn, and then talk to us, please. That's what we desire, and I'm going to be looking for that. If you don't step it up on these net last few speeches, your grade's going to go down. So be careful. Be ready for this. Don't forget to practice to preview and perform. The more you practice, the more your brain is ready to talk. And you are going to let us know what's coming up and then perform. Let us know what you have to tell us or what you have to say to us is extremely important. So we're going to talk about informative speaking. Because in an informative speech, your goal is to convey some fresh information. We want to have some new stuff, some newness to what we hear. Don't bring us old stuff. Bring us new stuff. We also want to be interested in the material, so make your material very interesting. Help us remember your important points. Remember, your task here is to be a teacher. You're not an advocate. You're an explainer. You're not a persuader necessarily in an informative speech. You're supposed to be giving us facts in an informative speech, not opinions. So let that be for other speeches. We want 
to be taught. We want to be explained uh, or given explanations. We want to be given facts. That's what informative speaking is all about. And there's a ton of different types of speeches. The first type of uh, informative speech is a definition speech. Look at this, this photo that's on your screen. What is this? Well, it's actually an example of a thing called a drip painting. Uh, this is a technique that was an, invented by the artist uh, Jackson Pollock. Many of you guys are familiar with his work. And one student gave a speech in which she defined drip painting and then discussed what made it different from other art techniques. And this is an example of a definition speech, a speech that goes beyond just the denotative definition, the dictionary definition, and it actually gives a detailed elaboration of a concept. So <clears throat> definition speeches are very good informative speeches. Let us know something. For instance, if you were going to give a definition speech, here's a sample purpose statement. To define for my listeners the uncertainty reduction in human communication. <coughs> to define for my audience the meaning of the term ecotourism. These are all definitions, and these are good purpose statements to get you started on the right track. Another type of informative speech is a description speech. And here's some sample purpose statements for a definition of uh, of this. We'll get to that in a moment. But uh, this is basically a description speech is given uh, painting a vivid picture of a person, an object, or an event. For example, a speaker could give a speech uh, describing a comet, uh, what it looks like, and how it appears as it streaks across the night sky, and then fill in all the facts that describe exactly what a comet is and what it does and what is its actions in the space. Here's some sample purpose statements for those descriptions that I alluded to to describe to my audience the highlights of the life of civil rights leader Rosa Parks. So not only can we take objects, we can talk about people. Describe what her life was like. Give us those highlights. Another thing is to describe to my listeners the inside of a beehive. You know, I never thought about that, but describe it to me. What does it look like? How hectic is it? How did the queen and the drone bees interact together. Now, here's a really good one. This is a process speech. In process speeches, you're going to be really concerned with explaining the steps or stages by which something is done or made. For example, you could explain the steps involved in windsurfing. And I've alluded to this before. One of the best speeches that I've come across is when a student came in with a short video of a free diver, someone who dives deep into the ocean without scuba gear. And all they have is a mask. They're holding their breath. And he uh, taught us how to free dive because the video he brought was actually a video of himself doing it in, off the coast of Florida. That's where he lived. And so process speeches are pretty popular for informative. I've seen process speeches that range from how to build a kite, to how to dance the Macarena, to how to boil crawfish. I mean, there's tons of things that you can inform us about, and process speeches are where those things fit in. Here's some sample process speech purpose statements. To inform my audience of the process used for DNA criminal investigations. Any of you guys in criminal justice? Well, here's your chance to shine. Uh, give us a a process speech on how crime investigations go down, how to inform my audience about the needed steps to, that it takes to lose a guy in 10 days. Well, that was a good movie. Uh, to inform my audience how to properly repair a leaky roof. We've even had process speeches about how to install ceiling fans, something I didn't know. Um, uh, there's two different types, though, of process speeches that we need to kind of tackle. The first type of process speech is when you show the listeners how to actually perform a process so they can take this back home and use these skills at a later time. This sometimes is called a demonstration speech. You see this lady here. If you've ever been on an airplane, this is a great type, an example of a process speech. She teaches us how to, the airline stewardess teaches how to correctly put on the seat belt. <clears throat> this is something she desires for everybody on the plane to actually do. And so for a process speech that is intended for someone to actually learn how to do something, this would be a good purpose statement to teach my listeners how to remove a stain from clothing. This is a very practical skill that all of us need to know how. Here's another type of process speech. Now this, this is a little bit different, 
because in this second type of process speech, you're basically going to be providing some information on how something is done or how something works. You ever seen those uh, television shows, how it's made, and they teach you one of the coolest episodes I saw. They, they followed a Corvette being built, a Chevrolet Corvette being built uh, from built from scratch until it rolled off onto the parking lot to be sold. It was really cool. And in these process speeches, you're not necessarily aiming for your audience member to go home and build a Corvette, right? You know, there's no way we could do that. But the second type is just informing about how something is done so that your listener can understand the process, not necessarily that they can go and perform it this task themselves. For example, this, this firefighter is participating in a public presentation uh, that is aimed at um, explaining the process that a firefighter follows in rescuing a person from the upper stories of a burning building. Now, the goal here is to inform the public on how it's done, not necessarily that everybody who listens to this speech will go and rescue people from burning buildings. That's not the idea, but it is fascinating to understand the processes that it takes to accomplish these things. For this type of speech, here's a good sample purpose statement. To explain to my listeners how surgeons perform bloodless operations with laser beams. Pretty fascinating. Now, if I gave this speech, I would not expect you to go become a surgeon who can do laser beam surgery. That is not the process I want you to take, but I do want you to understand how it is done. So here's some guidelines for process speeches. Use a ton of visual aids. People want to see what you're talking about. Involve the audience in that physical activity whenever possible. If you're talking about how to properly roll out pizza dough, bring some to class, bring some to your group. And actually have someone try to toss a pizza dough in the air. That would be fantastic. Make sure you proceed slowly through the steps that you give us. We want to be able to understand fully what you're trying to get across to us. And if there is a step that is unusually difficult, uh, give us a warning ahead of time. Say something like, hey, here's a very difficult step, so be careful when you do this. We want to know those things. So process speeches are very informative. Another type of informative speech is an explanation speech. And basically, you're just trying to explain a concept or situation to your audience. Uh, for example, one student gave a speech explaining why eyewitness testimony in the courtroom is so often inaccurate. It's pretty interesting, the science behind juries and witnesses. So here's a, a sample purpose statement on an explanation speech. To explain to the audience why some people keep dangerous, exotic pets. Now, this dude is cool. He reminds me of Zabumafu. You remember that uh, PBS cartoon-type real-life show? I believe uh, Zabu died not long ago, the real Zabu. That's kind of sad. I don't know why I brought that up. But anyway, I don't understand the people, and I have nothing against you if you're one of these people, but I don't understand the thought processes of taking something dangerous, putting it in a cage, and keeping it as a pet. That's weird to me. I, maybe I should just say unique. I don't want anything living in my house on purpose that could kill me. Uh, but there are reasons, and people enjoy exotic pets and even dangerous ones. So, hey, and let your audience know why these are kept as pets and what the thought process is behind it. So here's just some guidelines. Uh, relate your speech to the listener's self-interest. Uh, most speakers are going to come into your speech saying these two questions. You've heard me say it before. Why should I care? And why should I pay attention? Why should I care and why should I pay attention? What's in it for me? Every listener has that kind of bent. And the best motivator in a speech, therefore, is something that has an impact on their lives. Imagine a speaker who says, I want to talk to you about software for your laptop computer. So far, topic, not very interesting. It's not very enticing. But suppose the speaker says instead... I want to show you some software that will help you cut your expenses by listing the best prices for gases, the best deals at local restaurants, and the lowest prices for DVD movies, and so on. Now you have my attention. The listeners are likely to be interested because the speaker is actually touching on their own self-interest. And let's be honest, everyone in here is a college student. Everyone who is listening to this is a college student. I am a college professor. We're pretty much all broke, right? And so all of a sudden you have this, hey, we can save money? Yeah, I am totally interested in that. So relate the speech to your listener's self-interest. Make your information really interesting. I know this is just a picture of some old tires, and by and large, old tires are pretty boring. 
It doesn't sound like a very interesting topic at all. But one student told uh, this tale about uh, this fascinating new use for tires. Uh, In some states, they're actually taking old tires and they're transforming them into rubberized asphalt. Now, check this out. They actually take old tires and build the road out of old tires. And when they do that, what they've realized is that the road lasts longer, it's quieter than conventional asphalt, and if these roads are made with this rubberized asphalt, they're safer because you are less likely to skid on that material. Think about it. If you your tire is designed, designed to be as anti-skidding, I guess that's a word, as possible, if you then make the road out of old tires, you have double the friction where you will not skid. You will have quicker stopping time and reaction time. Pretty cool. Just from a picture of old tires, you get all kind of cool information, and that is totally informative. Now, here's one of your temptations. You're going to do a ton of research on this, on these topics. And many people today are going to suffer from information overload. Uh, When you give a speech, don't overload your listeners with this huge torrent of facts and figures, okay? Be really selective. Just give the basic material that people need to understand your key points, okay? Unless you have an audience of people who are very familiar with your topic, Um, then you have to go a little bit deeper. But still, you don't want to overload them. We can only comprehend and remember so much information at one time. Make sure you tailor that information, though, to each audience. For like this lady here, she's a chemistry teacher. Um, You know, she wants to find out what listeners know and what they don't know. And if you assess the knowledge level, you can avoid boring your listeners with information that everybody already knows. And you can avoid talking over people's heads if you're bringing in complex terminology and jargon that uh, surrounds your actual speech that people may not be familiar with. You may have to describe that as well. So tailor your information for each audience. And here's something that's really cool. In an informative speech, make sure that you use the familiar to explain the unfamiliar. Here's the truth. The wetlands of Louisiana are disappearing day by day. That's a fact, and we know that. We live here. And if you're not from here, then, hey, there's your introduction to it. Through erosion, we're losing the Louisiana coastline and the wetline, wetlands. Uh, to give you an idea of how much land is actually sliding into the sea every day, consider this. Every half hour, a piece of land the size of a football field disappears from the Louisiana coastline. Now, in a speech, you're using the familiar to explain the unfamiliar. We don't know how much, really, we can't really appreciate how much land slides into the ocean. But what we can know is that, wow, every half hour, a football field worth of wetlands goes away? Yeah, we're all familiar with what size of a football field is. Hey, we're in Louisiana, football country. We all at least have seen the LSU Stadium's football field on television, if not our local high school. So we know what the dimensions of a football field, and I think, that a size, uh, a piece of land the size of a football field goes away every half hour. That's amazing. That's that's totally amazing to me. In 10 hours, 20 football fields of wetlands are lost. Wow. So, yeah, use those things. Use those uh, familiar things to explain the unfamiliar. And don't forget, help your listeners remember your key information. You can use... Uh, any kind of uh, memory aids, uh, acronyms, acrostics, whatever you need to use. The acronym RICE can be remembered as the steps of first aid, like when a person suffers an injury like an ankle sprain. You rest it, you ice it, you com- use compression, and you elevate. These things actually help your, your listener walk away with that information in a usable form. So informative speeches are going to be awesome. It's time to start thinking about what you're going to speak about. Remember, Find the thing you're passionate about because your passion is going to flow through your informative speech. So start thinking about what can I inform my audience about? Maybe you have a passion that you are trying to prevent, like um, the growing problem of the sex trade here in the South. One of the biggest sex trade corridors runs across I-10 down South. Um, Maybe you're passionate about saving pets and you want to inform people about the dangers of not spaying or neutering their pets. Inform them of those things. Maybe it's something cool. You're a passion. You're a chef, and, and you want to teach us how to make sushi 
or something like that. That is totally cool. Inform us. Maybe you have a favorite historical character that you can actually uh, present some information on their life. Whatever you can do, inform us. Whatever you're passionate about, make that the, the theme of your speech. And I look forward to hearing from you really soon when it comes time to give your informative speeches.